सो हे गाइज वेलकम बैक टू अर्पिता चौधरी चैनल टूडे वी कैन एक्सप्लोर बंगला साहिब गुरुद्वारा दैट इज लोकेटेड इन न्यू दिल्ली प्लीज वॉच इट टिल एंड बिकॉज देर इज सस्पेंस Behind there is the priest, and it's all real gold. So these are the two priests who used to sit. There are always two. Here, one who sitting. So if need to go somewhere, so one accompanying him all the way. That's the holy bull I was telling about. Uh, you can see on this side, on the left hand side, many people taking bath, taking the holy dip. So it's all in the belief, all in the faith. People go there, it's considered. As I told you, it's all in the faith, all in the belief. The origin of this temple. This place was the palace of King of Jaipur, Raja Jai Singh. Our eighth guru came here. as the guest of the king in yeah. 17th century in the mid 17th century and when he came here there was pandemic like on epidemic level um they were put all the medicines and the holy water to all the people who were affected and all those who were affected they cured up they healed up but our eighth guru himself got caught by the disease and died at this place so later in his memory this temple was Built and like the palace was converted into the temple, and you can see this is the place where he used to give the holy water from, and still people taking the holy water from here as the blessing to cure themselves. During this pandemic now, Corona, yeah. thousands of people used to come here still, and they took the holy water from here. from uh, india there is a run of the sikh tourism so it started with the government my name is dalpal singh i am an information in charge at gurdwara bangla sahib and you are going to visit the biggest sikh temple in delhi yeah i hear about this so the sikh religion it's the sixth largest religion in the world okay. and one of the newest religions it is founded by guru nanak nanak was the name and guru means a master a teacher so when he founded this religion in 15th century there were so many useless beliefs in india like untouchability class system caste system guru nanak discarded all the things he said everybody has the same right to live women also have the same respect as men and there should be no discrimination of any caste color religion we all are creation of one god eternal one no name no shape you call it jesus Moses, Rama, Krishna, Buddha, any name, but nobody can see the God. They're all messengers only. So we believe in equality and humanity. Be equal and help all are the main concept of the religion. So after first Guru Guru Nanak, then comes the second Guru, then comes the third Guru, fourth Guru. We had ten Gurus, and the last Guru in person, three hundred more than three hundred years ago, Guru Gobind Singh Ji. So after him. he announced that there will be no guru in person anymore but a holy book which was there already since the first guru he always carried a book with him the first guru and writing his teachings in that book traveling all across the country and some neighboring countries as well as well to spread this message of equality and humanity and he met some other prophets or saints of that period and he found their message messages are good for humanity he has written their words with their respective names so he handed over that little book to the second guru to his successor the second guru did the same added more words to the third guru added more words to the fourth guru so until 10th guru it was a good heavy book 1430 pages which contains the teachings of six gurus and other prophets or saints of that period in total 36 religious personalities between 13th to 17th century so after 10th guru no guru in person but the holy book was designated as the next guru and the books never dies now we worship the holy book we follow the holy book as the guru and its eternal guru so we worship the was based on we worship the knowledge 
So the Holy Book Guru Granth Sahib contains the teachings of different personalities and those teachings are nothing about any religion, about any particular caste, color or any creed but only about the wisdom of the life, about your social and spiritual life, how to live a good social and spiritual life, how to live in peace and harmony, how to be equal, how to be thankful to the Almighty and how to serve the humanity. Because the service of the humanity, we believe nobody can see the God. And if nobody can see the God, how you can serve? We believe service of the humanity is the service of the Almighty. So for the service of the Almighty, there's, we have the community kitchens where we serve 25 to 30,000 people every day at this particular place with free meals, irrespective of caste, color, religion. And not only poor people, multi millionaires come here and they take this food as the blessing of the place to be equal, to fill their egos. And on Sunday, like today Sunday, more free day, there will be more than 50,000 meals just on Sunday. Yes, cool, sir. That's uh, just a concept of sharing. That's what we believe in. If we have some and some other one, they doesn't have any, please, you can share with them. With unfortunates. That's a turban, actually. The time, it was already since the time of the first guru. Uh, it's a, the concept of the turban is just to have a different identification and as well as turban was always considered as the mark, as the symbol of respect, as the symbol of wisdom. In older days, in those days, anyone who's going to visit someone superior than them or like someone more knowledgeable or someone higher than them, so they used to cover their head as the mark of respect. Is it must to wear this? It is must to wear. A Sikh always wear the turban. Generally when we are at home, we just keep a small piece of cloth just to cover the smaller one, to cover our head. But generally, uh, when we go outside, we always have the turban. They can be of different colors, they can be of the, some different styles, somewhere like this, somewhere the round ones. It can be of different styles, but the turban is always there. Yeah, and about the, uh, besides that, actually, uh, the 10th Guru, he gave us the system of baptism. Before that, also there was the baptism, but after the 10th Guru, the baptism was not only related uh, to be a Sikh, but to be a warrior as well. Because in 15th or 16th century, invaders coming from outside, they wanted to rule us, they wanted to convert us. So the 10th Guru, he gave all this strength and power and he formed an army who can fight against the evil. Evil not only like any particular religion or particular class, but evil within yourself. So, when they came and they wanted to convert, they wanted to rule us, so we fight back and uh, we used to carry five things. Every single must carry five things. These five things are started with a K ladder, so we call them five K. The first K is Kesh. Kesh means long hairs. We never cut hair. Kesh means hairs. And I also have this long hair. And my beard is this long. I tied a knot here inside. It's very long. And the single leg we never, never, ever. So the significance of the hairs is to have a different identification, as I mentioned earlier, and to remain as natural as God made us. Second thing is kanda, a small wooden comb we keep in the hairs, for, like to you keep your hairs clean, always. If you have long hairs, keep them clean as well. Third thing is kada, the hand bracelet, just to remind that these hands are made to work, to help others, to do good things in life. If I'm going to do something wrong, it will remind me, you should not. Fourth thing is to share a long underpants to control your sexual desires because this is not like a, like any other boxers you just wear them. It has a string. You tie the knot, and with the knot, that's a symbol, that's an oath to control the sexual desires. Just symbolic. All these things are symbolic. You must have a faith in them. 
and the fifth thing is kirpan uh, like a small sword or a dagger you can see here we all carry one those who are baptized just to remind that we were warriors as well so in the 15th or 16th century as I told you invaders coming so we had to fight back so in those days who has the power he is a ruler nowadays we don't need any swords to fight with anyone of course just to remind that we were warriors also and also to help anyone in the need to protect ourselves not to harm anyone not to fight with anyone but just to protection just for the sister protection and to help anyone in the need so these are the things like the five things and the baptism system as well now when you will go inside first you will wash your hand wash your feet that's not just that's to be pure to to for the hygiene because you are wearing the shoes when you remove the shoes your feet are dirty so clean yourself because a clean atmosphere can keep the clean concise as well so when you go inside inside under the canopy under the cover is the holy book now we have the copies all over the world the original one the hand written they are very few and one is the golden temple and different parts of india there are some big temples so they are there it's not now we don't have that hand written here the original one now we have the copies all over the world okay. so you will go inside it's covered you cannot see that but if you want to see that's on the other side so you will go inside under the canopy under the cover is the holy book you will go inside pay respect this way and walk clockwise when you move to your left on the left hand side you will see three people sitting there chanting with the music and they chanting the words the verses songs from the holy book and what are they singing it comes there are big screens inside what are they singing it comes to the screens with the translations in english and hindi and punjabi because we have computer software of the holy book and we also have an android application an iphone application of the holy book as well so after that you can walk clockwise and you will leave the main hall just before you leave the main hall on the left hand side on the corner beside the exit door you will find a separate room with the glass doors in that room we keep our holy book in the night so when you go so after 9 in the night all the services are over we place the holy book very respectfully in that particular room and there's also some other copies of the holy book there they don't open the same book every day so you will go out of the main hall just before you go out you will see people at the floor like this while going inside as well as coming out so just at the mark of respect like you just do like the same because you do like this like this like this any way you are worship the same all night only the different forms and these forms are not the god made man made god never come to us to tell us this way you want it and outside there's a big water body a holy pool considered as a holy pool people go there they take the bath they clean themselves so also just a belief like if you take a bath if you take a dip into the pool one can be cured of all diseases and ailments and it happens sometimes because it's not just in the water it's all in the belief or in the faith when you believe in something and it can happen so it's all in the faith just today morning i had few people uh, from us embassy they were very good friends so uh, we were talking about the faith what is faith okay i go to pack up to temple every day you can go to church every day if you don't go does it make any difference to the church if you go every day does it make any difference no so i am going there to the i am coming to the temple it doesn't make any difference to the temple i am not going to the temple it doesn't make any i am doing it for myself because i believe in this thing the temple never ask me to do anything so it's all in the faith all in the belief if you believe in something you do it if you don't you don't do it but still the god for him it doesn't matter 